This is lesson 4.1 and we're going to talk about applying GCF and LCM to fraction operations. This is the first one, multiplying fractions. It's split into three parts. We use the greatest common factor, the GCF, to simplify fractions when we find sums, differences, and products of fractions. We learned about GCF in video 2.1a and it's going to be linked in this description if you need it. We have 15 twentieths, we list all the factors of 15 that we can and the factors of 20 until we find the greatest one they have in common. It's a 5. That means we're going to divide the numerator 15 and the denominator 20 by that same number 5 and it simplifies to 3 fourths. We use the least common multiple, the LCM, of the denominators of fractions to add and subtract fractions. We're going to get into this more into the next lesson, but we learned about LCM in video 2.2, which is also going to be linked in this description. So very quickly, before the next video, if we're adding 2 fifths and 3 tenths, we can't add them unless they have the same denominator. And we think, well, the denominators 5 and 10 have 10 as their common multiple. 5 needs to be multiplied by 2 in order to be a 10. So, as I always say, the 2 gets jealous, and it wants to be multiplied by the same multiplier. So, we have 2 times 2, which is 4, and 5 times 2, which is 10. Now, they both have the same denominator. We can add 4 tenths and 3 tenths to get 7 tenths. To multiply two fractions, we multiply the numerators to each other, and then we multiply the denominators to each other. Then we write the product in simplest form. We have 2 thirds times 3 eighths. We do numerator times numerator and get a product for, for our numerator. Then we do denominator times denominator and get a product for our denominator. We have 2 times 3. We can write it with one long fraction bar if we want. That's equal to 6. Then we do the denominator 3 times 8 and get a 24. And we simplify by dividing by their GCF. We have a 6 and a 24. For 6 and 24, their GCF is 6. We list the factors of 6 and the factors of 24, and we get 6 as their greatest common factor. That means we divide the numerator and denominator both by 6, and we get 1 fourth, and now it's simplified. So in this example, we multiplied the numerator to the numerator and the denominator to the denominator, and then to simplify, we used their GCF. We can avoid simplifying if we use cross cancellation. We have 2 thirds times 3 eighths. We use 2 as the GCF for 2 and 8, and they can cancel out as a 1 and a 4. We think they have 2 as a greatest common factor, 1 times 2 is 2, and for the 8, coming across this way, 4 times 2 is 8. We cross this out as a 1. We cross this out as a 4. And we look at going this direction. Using 3 as the GCF for 3 and 3, 1 times 3 is 3, so we cross this out and make it a 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. We cross this out and make it a 1. We came across this way. Now we multiply 1 times that 1 and get a 1 and 1 times 4 and get a 4 and it's simplified. What we did in this way with cross canceling is we used their GCF right here in the problem instead of finding the products of the numerator and denominator and then finding the GCF. Here we did it first. So I have a couple of examples comparing multiplying straight across and simplifying versus cross cancellation. Here we have 9 tenths times 5 ninths. We multiply straight across. 9 times 5 is 45. Then we do the denominators. 10 times 9 is 90. Now we need to find that their GCF is 45. If we divide 45 by 45, we get a 1. And if we divide 90 by 45, we get a 2. But this could become a problem if you don't find the correct GCF and you just think, oh, we could divide them both by 5 or both by 9, and then you'll have to simplify again and again. 
If we use cross cancellation, we think, okay, nine and nine as factors, they have one in common. One times nine is nine, and one times nine is nine. We look at the five and the 10, and we think one times five is five, and two times five is 10. Now when we multiply straight across, we go one times one, which is one, and two times one is two. We didn't have to do this. Instead of finding the GCF for this fraction that needed to be simplified, we found the GCFs here in the numerators and denominators so that when we did multiply, it was already simplified. Let's try it again. Here we've got 8 26 times 13 16 We multiply numerator to numer numerator, 8 times 13. Well, that's 104. We, I had to do it on the side and because I don't have that memorized. So we have 104 as our numerator. Now we have to do 26 times 16. I did that on the side and got 416. So now I have 104 416 ths. And I needed to find that the GCF was 104. I may have made a mistake and tried using two and then simplifying over and over and over again until I got to 1 fourth. Or we could use cross cancellation. We think here we have an 8 and a 16. They have 8 in common because 1 times 8 is 8 and 2 times 8 is 16. We look at 13 and 26. Well, 13 times 2 is 26. So we can use the 13. 13 is 1 times 13. 26 is 2 times 13. Now we can just multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. We get 1 fourth, the same as we did up here. The only difference is we multiplied the numerators and denominators and then tried to find the GCF. And here we use GCF within the problem and didn't need to simplify. Sometimes we'll be able to cross cancel in both directions. Other times it will work in one direction. If we do both directions, we're crossing this way, canceling out the nines as a one. And if we go this way, we're crossing out the five and the 10 as a one and a two. We don't need to simplify. For one direction, we've got no greatest common factor. We have no common factors for nine and seven, so we're gonna ignore this for now. And we're just gonna cancel out these. The GCF for five and 10 is a five. 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. This cancels out as a 1, that cancels out as a 2. Now we do 9 times 1 is 9, and 2 times 7 is 14. We don't need to simplify. For 9 tenths times 3 eighteenths, there is no common factor for a 3 and a 10. And we can think, oh, they have 9 in common. 1 times 9 is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18. This cancels out as a, not, as a 1. This cancels out as a 2. We do 1 times 3 is 3. 10 times 2 is 20. Don't need to simplify. It's 3 twentieths. So don't worry if you can only go in one direction. It's still going to help you. We can multiply a fraction by a whole number by writing the whole number with 1 as its denominator. We need to make sure we simplify when we're finished. Here we have 9 times 5 ninths. We rewrite this whole number 9 as 9 over 1. Now we have 9 over 1 times 5 ninths. We can cross cancel these as a 1 and a 1. And we'll, we're going to leave these alone. We have 1 times 5 is 5 and 1 times 1 is 1. And we know 5 over 1 is 5 whole. Here we have 5 ninths times 4. We do 5 ninths times 4 over 1. We have 5 times 4, which is 20, and 9 times 1, which is 9, because they don't have any common factors, so we just multiply straight across. We have 20 ninths, and we think of that fraction bar as a division sign, 20 divided by 9 to simplify. 9 ninths equals 1 whole. And if we have another 9 ninths as another 1 whole, that's 18 ninths. Two more ninths would be 20 ninths. That means we have one, two, and two ninths. 
when it's simplified. We'll get into this more in the next lesson. So now we've completed the first part, multiplying fractions. We're going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions in 4.1b. Make sure you understand what GCF and LCM are. Remember, they're linked in this description. Have a wonderful day. Hit that like button if I helped you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.